Hello and welcome to Tour in a Nutshell. My name is John Fisher and I'm here today. We're going to talk about this week's Parsha. This week's Parsha is numbered 51. Uh, we're getting real close to the new year and actually Rosh Hashanah is Monday. It's, it's coming up. Um, and Parsha 51 or the Nitzavim, which in Hebrew stands for standing. In this, it's chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, God tells Moses and relays to Moses a prophecy about the last generation, about the end times. And I wanted to read that to you because I think it's extremely important that 12 or 3,200 years ago, 1200 BCE, God told Moses what was going to be happening at the last day. And I think that this Parsha, this, this Parsha reading is specifically designated to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let me read for you. Uh, again, starting Deuteronomy chapter 30. It says, When the time arrives that all of these things have come upon you, both the blessings and the curse which I have presented to you, and you are there among the nations, to which Adonai your God has driven you, then, at last, you will start thinking about what has happened to you, and you will return to Adonai your God and pay attention to what he has said, which will be exactly what I am ordering you to do today. You and your children with all of your heart and all of your being, at that point Adonai your God will reverse your exile and show you mercy. He will return and gather you from all the peoples to which Adonai your God scattered you. If one of yours was scattered to the far end of the sky, Adonai, your God, will gather you even from there. He will go there and get you. Adonai, your God, will bring you back into the land your ancestors possessed, and you will possess it. He will make you prosper there, and you will become even more numerous than your ancestors. Then Adonai, your God, will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your children so that you will love Adonai, your God, with all of your heart and all of your being, and thus you will live. Adonai, your God, will put all of these curses upon your enemies, on those who hated and persecuted you. But you will return and pay attention to what Adonai says and obey all of his mitzvot, which I am giving you today. Then Adonai, your God, will give you more than enough in everything you set out to do. The fruit of your body, the fruit of your livestock, the fruit of your land will all do well. For Adonai will once again rejoice to see you do well, just as he rejoiced in your ancestors." And that's an extremely important prophecy that Moses, what well, God gave to Moses about what I believe to be the last days and this last generation. Okay. We as followers of God, as followers of Yeshua, we will figure out that we have been a stiff-necked people and that we have refused to obey God. And because we refuse to obey God, God dispersed us and sent us throughout the world. And we know he did that in about 762 or so, where the Assyrians came down and took away uh, the northern ten and a half tribes of Israel and scattered them to the winds. And they assimilated into the populations that they lived in, whether it was Russia or Ethiopia or England or the United States or wherever they went. Even if it's to the furthest corner of the sky, God promises that in the last day, we're going to realize what we have done. We're going to repent and we're going to return to be obedient to God. Okay? And we will be obedient to what he told us to do 3,200 years ago. And I think and I believe and I see this as the Hebrew Roots Movement, what we call the Hebrew Roots Movement, is the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because that's what Yeshua said. Yeshua told the Samaritan, he goes, I am here only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Okay. He didn't come for the Gentile nations. He didn't come for you know, who else. He came in search of his lost sheep. He came in search of those people who are his and were given to him by his father, God. Okay. And those are the ten and a half tribes. They were dispersed throughout the world. These people don't even know who they are because they have assimilated and for 2,100 years, 2,200 years, 2,700 years, uh, these people have assimilated in the cultures. They've adopted their pagan religions. They've accepted Christianity. Uh, but there is this anger towards God, this anger towards his commandments. And what the scripture said was that in the last days, God is going to circumcise our hearts because that's what he wants, circumcised. Paul said the same thing. He said that it's better to be circumcised of the heart than of the flesh. Because if our heart is circumcised, we are loving God. The Messiah told us that there are two commandments. And upon these two commandments, the entire Torah rests. And we, we read in Deuteronomy 30, it says that in these last days, that the people who follow God, will worship and love God with all of their heart, all of their being, all of their soul, all of their everything. And if we can do that, and we can love God with our everything, then we will obey God, okay? and we will keep his commandments. The second one is just as important as the first the Messiah told us, and that is that we are to love our brother, our neighbor, as we love ourselves. Okay. So if we're loving our neighbor, we're loving our brother, we're loving God with everything that we have, we're going to obey Torah. We're going to keep the feasts. We're going to not cheat on our spouses. We're not going to have a revolving account at Ashley Madison. We're not going to do those things that offend those that we love. When we love somebody in, in our world, we do whatever we can to please them. God says, if you obey me, you will please me. Granted, don't think that I'm getting all legalistic and thinking that obeying Torah is going to grant you salvation because obedience will not grant you salvation. The only thing that will grant you salvation is the grace of God through the sacrifice given by the Messiah on Calvary so many years ago. Okay, and... But because we love God, we're going to obey God. We show God that we love him through our obedience to him and keeping our commandments. I've been watching Keith Green all afternoon, and this is the Sabbath, and I've been sitting watching Keith Green videos all day, and it's been quite enlightening. Keith Green, if you don't know, was a musician. He was a Christian musician, uh, starting in the light in 78, went through 84 uh, he died when he was 28 years old. He was of Jewish heritage and was raised a Christian. And he said that this conflict within his soul uh, between works and grace was something that gave him problems and it gave him issues. And he ventured off into Eastern mysticism and he ventured off into drugs and and he, he was seeking answers. Well, he went on a bad acid trip one day in 1979 or 1978 when he was 19 years old. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and found God during this acid trip. He found God and he found the Messiah, Yeshua, whom he calls Jesus. And who a lot of people call Jesus, but Yeshua um, is the Messiah. And... A lot of people come to a relationship with the Messiah. And then some people stay stagnated with, okay, I'm saved. That's all there is to it. You know, Martin Luther said back when he separated from the Catholics that we don't have to do anything. Grace is a free gift and we don't have to do anything. We can just suck on this salvation teat for the rest of our lives and we don't have to ever grow. We don't have to grow spiritually we don't have to grow out of toddlerhood um, what keith green and you notice this with keith green's uh, videos and his songs uh, towards the end of his life 
he was talking about it's what you do. You know, your entire world and your entire faith in the Messiah is about what you do. Okay? And this week's Parsha in Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, I think it was the first nine or ten verses, confirms that in the last days, we're going to realize that we can't just sit here and say, you know what, I'm getting some of my salvation. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go see God. We're going to repent and we're going to be obedient to God and we're going to obey God's commandments because that's what God wants us to do. It's not going to grant us any special favor. It will grant us blessing because it says in the scripture, if you do this and you obey my commandments, it will be for your blessing. Nowhere did God promise obedience to the Torah is something that grants you salvation. He said what grants you obedience to the Torah will grant you blessing and long life. You will have, your womb will be fertile, your land will be fertile, your, will, you will be wealthy, you will, everything that you can ever desire will be yours because you're obedient to Torah. Or you could choose the curse. And the curse of violating the law is death. And death without God is hell. Okay? You may or may not believe in hell, but I'm telling you, an eternity without the presence of God is hell. Okay? You can have hell on earth. You can have hell right now today. Because if you're not living with God, you are in hell. Okay? God promised us blessings and he promised us curses. The Christian world today is afraid of the curse. They said, I don't want any part of the curse, so I'm not following and I'm not going to be obedient to Torah. Okay, well, the curse comes for not being obedient to Torah. So now you're just all beside yourself. You're not going to obey Torah, so you're asking for the curses because disobedience to Torah brings a curse. Yes, disobedience to Torah brings a curse. Okay. We need to make a point to repent. This is the last days. I believe that this is the last generation. This week's Torah portion was about a prophecy of God given to Moses and shared that we will obey his commands. And if we don't, we will die because of our disobedience to Torah. Okay, this has been Torah in a Nutshell. My name is John Fisher. I hope this was helpful. I hope it'll start a discussion. Let's have a good day and may God always bless you because you're obedient to Torah.